Hey guys, what's up? Andre here from PSD Box. Uh, it's been a long time since I made the last free tutorial, so uh, today I want to show you how to make this simple manipulation in Photoshop. Um, it's not a difficult manipulation to achieve, um, and I want to show you how to get this sort of ambient colors and lighting effects. And um, we're gonna use a few stock images that are all free, and on my website you will find the links uh, to all of the stock images used here. Uh, they're all uh, from free sites like um, unsplash.com or pixabay and um, well I want to show you how to make this will work uh, on shadows some light effects and let me zoom in uh, so you can see it I'm gonna show you how to make hair uh, really simple some really basic makeup and skin retouching so I hope you will uh, enjoy it and let's get started So for this uh, manipulation, I started with the background, um, like I pretty much always do when I make manipulations. So I'm going to press Ctrl Command O to open my stock folder. Here you'll, uh, you can see all the images, but there are some other images that I didn't use uh, on the final uh, manipulation. But um, well, you'll find the links, as I said, on my website. On the video description, you will find the links uh, to the article where you will find a step-by-step -step, um, version of this tutorial as well. So I started with this image, uh, I just wanted this bottom part here, and then I used another image on top, which is this one, and I like this one because of this house over here. So I'm gonna copy it, Control A, Control C, and Control W to close it, and Control V to paste that here. Um, I unlock the background and I'll name it Field 1, and this one on top with the house, I'll name it Field 2. Now, since my rhino is going to be standing right here, I'm going to flip this, the house, I wanted to have it on the left side, so I'm going to press Ctrl Command T, right click and choose flip vertical, uh, horizontal, sorry, and I'm going to make it a bit bigger to cover my entire canvas. When you do this, you will see that if you zoom in at 100%, you will lose some quality here because this image is not a particularly very well well, very good quality, but um, we're gonna blur this um, background, so it's not gonna be visible anyway. I'm gonna create a layer mask for the field two layer, and I'm gonna get the gradient tool. Make sure you have black to white, and just uh, first I have to reverse it, and I'm gonna drag from here to here like that. Let's see how we can blend this. Have to drag it a bit lower. Just have, want to have a nice transition. Uh, just a bit higher up, uh, something like that. I'm gonna leave it there. And now for the field two well, with this layer mask, I also want to select the top part, which is the sky over here. Well, actually, I could, um, I could use the same layer mask to mask the sky as well. Um, let's open the sky image first, which is I use this one, but you can use any sky that you want. I like this colors over here um, and I liked this dark side of the sky as well. That's why I used it. And I'm gonna paste it right below everything here. Uh, it's really small uh, as you can see. Um, if you want you can make the canvas smaller but I'll use the same size that I used for the original. So I'm gonna make it bigger to cover my entire canvas. Again if I deactivate the rest of the layers and I zoom in, you will see that it loses a lot of quality. But as I said, I'm gonna um, blur this so it's not going to be visible. So um, now what we want to do is get rid of the sky here. You have two options here. I have Photoshop CS6 and uh, CC, sorry. So I can, if you have Photoshop CS6, I think you can do this as well. Just select uh, two, uh, the two filled layers and press Ctrl Command G. This creates a group uh, and here I have the both layers. And now I can create the layer mask for the group and now I can use um, this to mask the sky for the whole group. If you cannot do this, you have to use a layer mask. You can either merge both layers and then use a layer mask or create a layer mask for both layers. I'm gonna use the group and mask it here because it's easier. So I'm just gonna create a gradient from here like that and from a bit lower. Yeah, something like that. And maybe with the 
soft brush and about 50 and 50 percent well actually let me let me drag the sky a bit higher up so i can yeah it's not even necessary because this blue part over here blends with the blue part from here so it's it blends perfectly like that so and now what i want to do is desaturate the filled one this one the bottom part so i'm going to create a hue saturation as a clipping mask for it because i don't want to affect this this layer one which i'll name sky and i'm going to drop the saturation to minus 60. they are more similar in terms of uh, saturation and color okay now we have the basic uh, well the base of the background here but uh, on this one over here on the house, the problem is we have this sky which is quite dark over here. Uh, see right there. And here we have this light which is not really what I need. So what I will do is double click on the field 2 layer, uh, which is the one that has this house over here. And I'm going to use a gradient overlay. And the gradient overlay that I will use is black to transparent. So first I'm going to... Uh, reset the foreground colors and now I can choose foreground to transparent I'm gonna use a, a, an angle of zero degrees this will create a um, vertical uh, gradient and I'm gonna leave it to normal so you can see what I'm doing see it right over here and change the blend uh, the style to reflected and see we have this thing over here and if I increase the scale now you can see how this uh, becomes smoother and smoother and I can also um, move it around and I'm gonna put it right there and I'm change I'm gonna change the blind mode to soft light and you can see how now th this becomes a bit darker uh, with multiply it will, it will also work but you'll have to decrease the saturation and the opacity sorry quite a bit like that and probably increase the scale even more like that we just want a soft uh, transition over there see that before and after uh, just to darken a bit the sides uh, probably n not uh, well uh, this one a bit more than this uh, left side because you can see we have this light here okay now uh, this looks a bit better let's uh, move on and as i said um, i wanted to blur um, this gradually so um, i would like to blur from here uh, to, to this uh, gradually like that so I'm gonna use the iris blur from the blur gallery this is new in Photoshop CS5 I think and CS6 um, but what you have to do is first create a stamp so make sure you have everything uh, as you want before you move on and what I will do is press shift alt command and E or shift alt control E on a PC or just simply select all with control command A and then go to edit, choose copy merged, and then uh, image, uh, edit paste. And I will turn this into a smart object just in case. And I'll go to filter, um, blur gallery, and I'll choose the iris blur. And here you can see this small diamond uh, icon. This allows you to create, um, to change the shape to make it like rectangular. Uh, and I want it like that. I'm gonna make it really wide and I have to zoom out a bit uh, with the alt and the uh, mouse wheel you can zoom in and out and I'm gonna make it bigger and what happens is that here inside where you can see this four uh, points here this is a transition area everything that it goes beyond this points outwards will be blurred and what I want to do is I want to drag this lower I want to have half uh, of this um, like this because I want this lower part to be in focus and the rest to be out of focus I'll zoom in and you can see how it starts to gradually uh, blur the image see that and the amount of blur that I used is 20 pixels but uh, I used um, like a bigger uh, um, shape like that and let's see where the blur starts I want a really soft transition yeah also make sure that the edges here are not blurred so if if they are just make this thing wider and that's it or increase well make this points a bit uh, wider like that and you can see that from here on it starts to gradually blur the image i'm gonna drag it a bit higher up and that way the house is not really that blurred but the sky it is so 
this also helps to remove the noise from that sky which we um, made bigger and uh, it lost a bit of quality but now um, because of the blur uh, it looks okay so I'm gonna click OK now let's choose high quality this will probably give us a bit of a better quality in blur and I'm gonna click OK and wait for the filter to okay we have the background and now we can move on I'm not gonna delete the original layers just in case I'm gonna leave them there and the next thing that I'm going to do is add our, well, the animal there, but uh, I'm not going to spend time uh, cropping it from the background. Um, let me open it where that is, right here. Um, this is the original image. I just used the pen tool, um, trace the contour around it, and that's it. I would probably uh, refine the mask a bit uh, just to make the edges a bit better because you don't want to make them too sharp uh, but something like that and well I'm gonna move this straight to my document over here and I'm gonna make it smaller because it's too big I'm gonna change the name of the layer as well and let's make it I'm gonna turn it into a smart object just in case I want to make it bigger or if I want to modify the mask later on uh, let's say about that big and if I want to make it bigger again I can do that without losing quality um, on the image I will leave it right there now we have, uh, we have a bit of work here uh, we have to blend it a bit better with uh, well here with the ground we have to make some shadows and we ha well, we'll have to make some shadow on the on the body of it as well. So uh, first, before moving on, I want to group this. I'm going to name it Rhino because uh, we'll have some layers here and I want to have everything organized. The first thing that I want to do is um, add a, a vibrance or hue saturation adjustment. And I dropped the vibrance to minus 34. Uh, make sure you clip this adjustment to the Rhino layer. And I also drop the saturation to minus 10. Okay, the next thing I want to add is some levels. You can also use curves, but I use levels. Also clipped, because we only want to affect this layer and not the background. And the settings that I have for the levels is 12. Uh, this makes the darks a bit darker, so it makes a bit more contrast. And then the highlights to 251 just to recover some of those highlights there. Okay, now, um, the next thing I wanna do is create a layer mask for this uh, Rhino layer because I want to blend a bit the, well, the background here and the animal itself. And you can use, um, you can use this grass brushes that come with Photoshop. Um, uh, it's really, it's a really nice brush and uh, for grass it works perfectly so just select that but you have to open the uh, the brushes panel press f5 and just uncheck color dynamics you don't want to activate that because it will mess up it will blend these two colors which is not what i want make sure you have the opacity and the flow of the brush to 100 percent and just uh, paint like that and you can see it creates this sort of grass and it looks like this rhino is actually standing on the grass there uh, with the shadows it it will become even more realistic but it's a lot better than using a soft brush and just uh okay if you need it if you use a smaller uh, canvas side just use a, make the brush a bit smaller notice that i didn't paint here because it looks like uh he's actually like kind of lifting the leg so uh this one should be standing in the grass but this other side no not so i'm gonna leave it like that and maybe here on the mouth as well a bit just a few passes okay now it looks a bit better the next thing i want to do is some uh shadows uh, on the ground so you can use the same layer um, now I have to take 
uh, to keep in mind that the light source comes from here somewhere so the shadows should be quite uh, straight down so what I will do is duplicate this layer I'm gonna alt click and drag it I'm gonna delete the layer mask and I'm gonna rasterize the layer right click and choose rasterize because I had it as a smart object and I have a copy of this as you can see but without the adjustments and what I will do is press Control command T to load the free transform and now I will flip it I will right click and choose flip uh, vertical and move it right there so like have like a reflection and now we have to remove all light information from it so I'm gonna press Control command U to open the hue saturation and I'm gonna drop the lightness to minus 100 and this creates the silhouette of the of the animal and now I can um, use this to make the shadow. Now I have to distort this a bit uh, because the shadow is not really like standing well down like that so I'm gonna I, again I press Control uh, T right click and choose uh, you can choose distort and uh, just uh, do something like this Str uh, slightly on an angle because light comes slightly from the left side so I'm gonna do it like this and what I want to do is fade a bit this shadow. I'm gonna click here and drag and see how that looks like. Yeah, something like that. I think it looks nice, but now I have to blur the shadow a bit. It's too sharp, so I'm gonna go to filter. You can use smart object if you want. I'm not gonna do it for, for now. And I'm gonna use, I like the, the blur gallery, I think it's more realistic than the Gaussian blur, but anyways. Uh, 15 pixels of blur might be okay, let's use 20 to soften it a bit more. And I'm gonna click OK. Okay, now the filter has been applied. The next thing I want to do is keep working on this layer mask because um, you can see the shadow here. Is, uh, we have to um, mask some of, uh, of the areas so I'm gonna use a soft brush for that and just delete the shadows where I don't need it like there over here and right there great now it looks nice but the shadow is too strong so I'm gonna drop the opacity let's say to 50% something like that it's not looking bad but um, it's too soft I think well it's too let's say 75 and yeah I think it looks better anyways we have to make uh, the well some gradients here to make things look a bit darker and we have to darken the the rhino itself as well so uh, let's let's do that now let's create another layer which uh, this one I will name it rhino shadow And this one that I just created, I'll name it the soft shadow. And with this soft brush with an opacity of 30 and flow 30 as well. I'm just oops, I just wanna make sure that I deactivate that and check the transfer. Uh, pan pressure. If you don't have a, a graphics tablet, it doesn't really matter. Just use a low opacity and flow like 20 or something like that and just Paint some really soft shadows there. Okay, something like that. And uh, next, I'm, I want to create the body shadows. Um, so I'm gonna select the Rhino layer and I'm going to click the new layer icon. This will create, uh, this will automatically create a new clipping mask layer, which I'll name body shadows. It doesn't matter if it's above the adjustments or below the adjustments because we're going to paint with black so it's not going to be visible. I will change the blend mode of this layer to multiply. And the color that I'm going to use is a really dark brown, not completely black. This is really dark brown, not very saturated either, so about there. And let's say with an opacity and flow of 30, maybe it's too much. No, it's okay because I also have the pen pressure, but uh, if you don't have a, a graphics tablet, just maybe use like 10 and 20 for opacity and flow. And I just want to darken parts uh, of the of the body because the light comes from from the other side of, of, of him. So um, 
I have to darken this part here that is not being touched by the light. And using opacities, really low opacities and flow um, will help you build up the effect, which is very nice. And it's a lot easier than just painting with um, high opacities and then having to erase things and uh, this way we can also create sort of a rim light because if you don't paint on the really top on the very top edge here uh, you can create a sense of oops I painted too much over here uh, let's drop the opacity of the eraser to 10 well 20 and 20 okay Uh, notice how I left some light. Um, I'll create a new layer so you can see it. Uh, I left some um, light right on these areas over here across the top part. So uh, just because the light is like hitting that part. So that's why I tried to not paint too much over those areas. Uh, we're probably going to move the rhino uh, around here, but. Um, when we add the woman but uh, for now I'm gonna leave it there and the next thing I want to do is create a new layer and add the model right there so um, again I'm gonna go to the original image and get the girl from from this document because I'm not going to spend time extracting her from the background as you can see again I use the pen tool notice on the hair how I cut it uh, I'm sure I'm gonna show you how to paint the hair back um, but while well, that's um, how I cropped it using the pen tool and I'm gonna move her right over here to my document and I'm gonna name this layer girl and I'm gonna group her onto a group which I'll name again girl and I'm gonna turn her into a smart object and I'm gonna make her smaller the reason why I like to use smart objects is because for example uh, if I make her like that and then later I realize that the scale is not matching if uh, th that she's too small if I want to make it bigger again I will lose quality but that way if you use smart objects you can you preserve the original pixels of the image and you can make it bigger again without losing quality I think this is the correct size I, I didn't uh, make any measurements to make it uh, on the scale, but I think it to me, I think it looks uh, pretty well uh, regarding the size, maybe even a bit too big, but I'm gonna leave it like that. And I'm gonna place her right over there. Now, um, the first thing I want to do here is make the shadows of the girl. So, um, again, this time I have to create a new layer below her and name, name it Girl Shadows. And with the brush tool, opacity and flow to let's say 20 and 20 and the really soft brush zoom in and start painting now the shadows here will be stronger on the right side right over here and a few shadows right under her hands there but uh, especially here painting with black blend mode of the of the um, layer to multiply or normal it doesn't really matter just paint there but with black not with white um, yeah I have the transfer on uh, probably the opacity to 30 because I also have the pen pressure on and as you uh, the closer you paint to her legs for example uh, the darker the shadow has to be the stronger and then you fade away uh, the shadow a bit. Maybe I'll leave the flow to 30 and the opacity to 20. Yeah, like that. You don't need a graphic style, as I said, uh, with the mouse you can do it just fine. I worked with the mouse for years uh, before I had my first uh, graphic tablet, and you can create some really stunning shadows uh, just as well. So, with just a bit of practice. Um, Okay, uh, under this um, dress, the shadow has to be pretty much black and then just fade out. 
Um, I'm not gonna paint too um, many shadows over here. Oops, I already painted too much. Okay, because that area is supposed to be lighted like so, and here some shadows again. Here we just want to create shadows under her hands, the finger around the fingers have to be pretty dark and then here with a really big soft brush just a couple of passes but nothing too strong except over here which we have uh, over here where we have really dark shadows and then soften them up with a big soft brush let's zoom out and see how that looks before and after see that Maybe it's even too strong over here, uh, but I will leave it like that. Again, here we have to create some body shadows as well. But uh, before we do that, let's make some adjustments to the girl to make her fit a bit better the background. So for the uh, girl layer, I'm going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer clipped to the girl layer. So I'm going to alt, alt cl click between the layers to create the clipping mask or right click and choose create clipping mask. And here I um, just dropped the saturation to minus 13. And also if you want to change the white balance a bit, I think it has like a, a, really, a bit of a red tint. Uh, you can choose for example the reds or simply use this hand icon and click here. And you can, you want to, well you can desaturate this a bit or simply change the, the hue, but I recommend not messing with the hue, just drop the saturation a bit to minus 10 or something like that. Just to remove some of that red tint, uh, see the before and after. And next I'm going to add some curves, again clipped to the girl layer, create clipping mask. And here we're going to dive into the uh, channels here. So well, let's start with the blue channel and um, here I just changed uh, the top one um, so I set the, the input to 242 added a bit of uh, blue to the highlights and it's even too much because I desaturated that but let's leave it to 240 or even less 245 that's okay and then on the reds I also added a couple of points here first with an input of 123 and output 118 and then another one with an input of 209 and an output of 205 see that I uh, removed uh, even more of that red so I would probably on the hue saturation on the reds I would leave this to how it was uh, that's why I use the curves to remove some of that red tint and on the RGB again I used two points um, 114 and output 110 and then another point with input 213 and output 208 so that's what I did with the curves. See that before and after. I removed some of that redness uh, and changed a bit the tones. And next, let's create a new layer on top. Again, clipped. And let's name it again Body Shadows, just like we did with the Rhino. Body Shadows. And I'm going to get the brush tool again. We're going to use a really soft brush and low opacity and flow 20 and 20 or something like that. Uh, remember that I also have the pen pressure so I can use higher values here and uh, uh, push less on this uh, pen here and just paint with black some uh, shadows especially here on the right side of the body um, to darken parts of, uh, of her body here let's now uh, move on and make the hair um, for the girl layer, I'm going to create a new layer mask. Um, remember that I turned into a smart object and if you have a smart, if you have a layer mask and turn that layer into a smart object, it's like the layer mask disappears and you can create a new one. So I created a new layer mask 
and I'm gonna increase the opacity and the flow of the brush to 100% and I'm gonna increase the brush hardness to about 70, 75 or something like that and on this layer mask I'm gonna paint with black with a smaller brush just, brush just to uh, soften a bit these edges I'm gonna deactivate the transfer uh, I just wanna, uh, well 70 it's too much, 50% uh, or 40 just to soften a bit the edges of the hair because remember I cut this with a pen tool and the edges are really sharp I don't want them uh, that sharp, they're too sharp and I'm gonna show you how to paint hair I'm looking at the size of the brush right now here and the size of the, well, the kind of the hair here. Um, 20, as I, as I can see, it looks nice, or 25. And now I have to create a custom brush to paint the hair. So uh, I'm taking as a reference the size uh, of this and think that inside of this circle here we have a few points which will be the hair which we're going to use to paint that. So um, if I right click, I can see that the size of now is 25 pixels. So I'll create a new document with the same size, 25 by 25. You can make it a bit bigger if you want, and then you can make it smaller. You can control the size of the brush. And I'm gonna zoom in as much as I can. And with the brush tool, I'll increase the hardness to 100% and decrease the size to one pixel. And here I'm gonna use the mouse and I'm just gonna click once there, then a couple of times here, maybe make the brush two pixels, and click once there, and then another one there, and then make it back to one pixel, and click once there, and a couple of times right over there. So these are random points which we will use to create uh, individual hairs, see that? So what I will do now is go to edit, uh, of course, you have to make sure that the white, uh, the background is white and the points that you make are black. And then go to edit and choose define brush preset and just name it hair. And voila, that's how you can create brushes. That's If you didn't create any brushes before, that's how you created your first brush. And it's really easy as you can see. And now we have this here. If, you, if I paint with this, you can see, uh, let's create a new layer below the girl and let's name it hair. And if I paint with this brush that I just created, um, you can see what it does. Now, one thing I have to do is um, change a bit the behavior of the brush. So I'm gonna press F5 or uh, go to window and choose brush. Um, and here on the brush tip shape, make sure you have the spacing set to, Z to 1%. And if you use a, a graphics tablet, activate the transfer. And you can also check the here on the shape dynamics, uh, brush projection. Um, I'm not gonna activate it, but uh, can give you different results. And now we have the brush ready to create hair. If I paint with white, you can see how we can create these lines. Uh, they're a bit uh, thick uh, compared to the hair of the girl, but I can make the brush a bit smaller. And now what we have to do is make sure, as I said, that the hair layer is below the girl layer. Zoom in and just sample hair, uh, well, sample the color from the original hair and just paint like this. And you can, you can create hair like that. Uh, sample different colors and tones um, to make it look similar to the hair that, uh, well, it's already on the image. Um, this brush that I created, uh, the hairs are too, are a bit too, too thick. So I would probably have to just click once uh, for every hair that I created. But anyways, it's not looking that bad. I'm gonna sample this blonde hair from here, some darker tones to mix that. You just want to create some hairs uh, sticking out from behind and make it look a bit more natural than just having a soft uh, a soft uh, edge there having these lines over here make it look more natural uh, keep in mind that I'm at 300% zoom so 
when you zoom out you will see this a bit different I'm gonna paint some brighter hairs like that over there um, also keep in mind that I, I'm doing this really quick but uh, try to make the hairs more separated um, this one I painted too much points like with four or five have enough uh, and then just uh, paint over and over again it's better than having too many points and with every stroke you can you can you create too many uh, hairs and it's difficult to control so I'm gonna leave it like that I'm gonna paint some brighter hairs over there oh that's two of the lines I want to have them more like flowing I like that okay I'm gonna leave it like that and let me show the before and after at zoom 100% before and after if you uh, spend some time here you can create some pretty realistic hair but uh, for just making this in five minutes I think it's it's looking pretty good okay now we are pretty much done uh, the next thing that I want to do is um, the skin I want to soften it a bit so I'm gonna create a new layer on top of everything I'm, and I'm gonna clip it to the girl there as well and I'm gonna name it soft skin now I will select the mixer brush tool and the settings that I have here work for pretty much any image that I used um, between 10 and 20 for all of the settings here you can copy the ones that I have here if you want and just uh, keep trying and just try it for your image make sure you have selected sample all layers and that you uh, activate this uh, option over here um, this is to clean the brush after each time you stroke because we don't want to carry on uh, color information from one stroke to another so um, check that and now use a small brush a medium sized brush like this and on this new layer that we created uh, since we checked sample all layers we can paint on this uh, safely without affecting the rest of the layers and just uh, make brush strokes like this uh, here if you have a graphics tablet uh, it will work easier it's more natural but you can do with uh, with the mouse uh, just as well uh, the only difference with the graphics tablet is that it's a bit more natural when you create the strokes here uh, one thing you um, have to notice is that I'm following the shapes of the of the face uh, all the facial features and of the body uh, shadows and highlights and everything so just keep that in mind and everything will will be fine um, also notice that for example um, if I start from here just click there click and drag and then here I let go and then click here and then go back this is just to blend things a bit better I don't just click once and move several times uh, this removes all the texture and is that what I want so just uh, stroke in one way let go and then click and go the other way um, that's the best way of mixing the tones without losing all the texture I think and uh, that's how I do it at least completely remove all the texture and everything so I'm gonna leave it like that let me show the before and after it's a really soft uh, skin um, retouching nothing really uh, extreme and now let me show you how I made the makeup uh, really easy on a, on a single layer I recolored the eyes and the lips so I create a new layer um, and name it makeup and I'm gonna change the blend mode to overlay and I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna start with the eyes zoom in you can use two layers if you want but with one layer I could do it get the normal brush and let's use a small brush and hardness about 50 or 60 uh, let's leave it on 60 and and do it that way but um, 
for this uh, simple manipulation I think this is enough so I will paint with this color like that and if it you don't like it you can press Control command L to open the levels and then just make it brighter uh, if you want and then for the lips on the same layer I used uh, a red color like this let's see if, if it's too strong or if it's okay yeah it's too strong I want to desaturate it and make it a bit more towards the gray tone too strong even less saturated and darker and this one starts to look better like that but uh, a bit darker still like so and the hardness is okay but I want a normal brush uh, something like that and if it's too strong and you want to change only the lips without affecting the eyes what you can do is make a selection around it like that and then use levels or hue saturation and desaturate it bring the lightness higher or change the hue that looks nice over there click OK and that's it makeup done really quick and simple okay so we have the girl right here and uh, the animal standing there now I can select both layers and move them around because uh, I want that light um, well, on the original I had the sky uh, more towards the left uh, towards the right sorry so I had the woman uh, standing over there but uh, for this one uh, I think the sky I made it a bit bigger on the original image but anyways we'll have the light source there and, and that's it the next thing I want to do is um, some dodging and burning um, and the way you do that is create a new layer I'm gonna alt click the new layer icon and I'm gonna name it dodge burn and here I'm gonna change the blend mode to soft light and fill with soft ne light neutral color 50% gray and click OK and looks like nothing happens the layer is still there but now I can use the burn tool for example I'm gonna start with the burn tool and I'll use let's say an exposure of about 10 is okay and this soft brush and just start painting over dark parts of the image here and just enhance darkness well dark areas of the animal's body great now let's uh, switch uh, to the dodge tool uh, the exposure here I'm gonna leave it to 30% and I'm gonna enhance the eyes here with a small brush just a few strokes here and there to emphasize this parts over here like so if you press the alt key while you have the dodge tool selected you will burn while you have it pressed and I'm gonna do that there great now let's move to the woman and dodge a bit the whites of the eyes and a bit here the lips make them brighter this nose light and also this shadow here I don't really like it it's too strong so a couple of passes with the dodge tool uh, that light over there This creates a sort of a fake uh, plastic <laughs> looking effect, but I like it. I don't know, I, I like how that looks. Um, so uh, that's why I use it. But it's really up to you. If you don't like it, just undo it. Um, also, you can enhance the hair, so we can make the highlights of the hair stand out a little more. Um, on the original, I, I used the layer to colorize this part as well, but I'm not gonna do it here. Um, 
if you're a premium member you can download the PSD file and look at how it was made but um, there's a little difference uh, compared to what I did here so more shadow here so I'm pressing the alt key sometimes to darken some parts but right now I'm with the dodge tool so uh, I want to enhance this part over here zoom out a bit so I have a better view the skin of the of the animal can make it really stand out some areas and make it look really nice I'm gonna dodge especially this top part here because I said it's where the light hits the most okay I'm gonna leave it like that let me show you really quick what I did before and after uh, girl looks a bit fake uh, to be honest with this but uh, anyways I'm gonna leave it like that I did it really quick um, just to show you what you can do with this let's start making the final adjustments and um, we're gonna start with a gradient fill so um, gradient and here you want to use black to transparent so um, you can uh, reset the colors there and then um, choose foreground to transparent make sure you have the radial style selected and um, change the well I have to reverse it because we want to have this hole in the middle and the scale that I use for this is 420 a really big scale uh, to have a really soft um, actually we're just creating a, a, a vignette uh, effect uh, so um, leave it like that change the blend mode to multiply and if you want to move it around you have to double click here and open this small panel and that way you can uh, move this around and I'm gonna put it right there but probably the, the transition is too soft and in order to correct that I can move this like this over there and maybe that way looks a bit better and drop the scale to 400 I just want to darken the sides of the of the image there um, that's looking good let's move on and add a color lookup and here um, I use the drop blue drop blues and I set it to 70% opacity and then a curves adjustment and here uh, I changed the blue uh, curve I set this to I started from the lower uh, point here with an output of 14 and then here in the middle another point with input 202 and output 179 and then the top point here I changed the output to 229 so I added more yellow and more blue more yellow on the highlights and more blue on the shadows and then for the RGB I have a point with input 70 and output 65 and then another point with input 196 and output 201 so I increased the contrast of the whole image and you can see already what we did then a gradient map and I use the photographic toning uh, preset uh, folder here and I use the gold copper let's see where that is gold copper right there and I use the soft light this increases the contrast of the image a lot so I dropped the opacity to uh, just 15 percent uh, I just want to have some of the color and especially the contrast that this creates and then another adjustment which I rarely use which is a channel mixer and here uh, 
I let me uh, show you what I did here. Um, what you do, what you do here is just uh, change the balance of the colors on each channel. Uh, and for the blues, I have uh, minus twelve, then twelve for the greens, and uh, this one to ninety-two. Okay, see what you what you do with this. Then on the green channel, uh, I have zero for the reds. And for the greens, 100, and for the blues, minus 9. This adds more magenta. And on the reds, I have 100, then 20 for the green. Uh, this adds more magenta. And minus 32 for the, uh, for the, for the blues. Okay, and this, this is the effect that we create. I can create more, uh, well, change the tones a bit and uh, make the image a bit darker. And then another curves adjustment, and uh, this time I only changed the blues here. Um, I changed the output of the uh, top left point to 15, and the top right to 223. So again, some split tone effect, but I changed the opacity to 43%, just to give it a touch of blue. And while well, that split tone effect, and then another color lookup, and again with the drop blues, and I left it at normal at fifty percent opacity, and this is what what I got. Now the face of the woman looks a bit too dark, and there's no light effects here. So what you could do is just uh, well first let me group everything here and let me the adjustment. And on the color, uh, on the mm, dodge and burn, I'll drop the opacity to 60% because uh, I don't like what it does to the woman's face. But what I did on the original, let me show you that, is I, as you can see, the sky falls, uh, the light there falls behind the woman's back and I could add some light effects. In this case, it's not, so I'm gonna add some light effects there. But keep in mind when you do this, uh, try to make the sky bigger and have the light source behind the woman. It, it will look a bit better. So uh, with the brush tool, what you do is just I created a new layer below, well above the background here, that well the the one that I um, blurred, and I'll name it Sunlight One, and I'll change the blend mode to Color Dodge, and with the big soft brush, um, I will paint with the color like for example this one really dark and saturated let's see maybe it's too strong yeah something like that a bit bigger paint once there and then create a new one and I'll name it sunlight 2 and this time I'll change the blind mode to screen and I'll use an a big while well, the same brush size uh, with this color a bit smaller there then another color a bit brighter and a smaller brush another point there and then something really bright and really small right there in the middle like so and that's how I created that light effect there and then on top of everything, create a new layer and name it Glow above the adjustments and everything. Name it Glow and change the blend mode to Screen. And this time I used the same, well, really soft brush, but really dark tone of yellow. Yeah, see that? Just a couple of lights there. They're even too strong, so probably I could... I could use the yeah that to make it just a bit uh, darker. Okay, now we're done, but um, I want more light on the woman's face. You could use a layer with soft light and uh, just paint the light there. But uh, I will create a stamp now with Shift Alt Command and E to merge all the layers into a new layer. I'll turn this into a smart object and I'll use the camera raw filter. If you don't have this filter, just uh, uh, don't use it, but uh, I like to use it. And here I can increase the clarity. You can really uh, change the aspect of, of your final image with this, and I like it. 
and I could use this uh, brush here to just like paint a light there and um, bring everything to zero and just increase maybe the light over there and probably the clarity of it see how I just increased the light over there and uh, now move on with the rest of the image and uh, see what we can do here uh, white balance I could make it more yellow but I'm not gonna touch that because I'm gonna use the split tone effect later um, probably the saturation a bit more or well actually desaturate but increase the vibrance like so um, I also increased the clarity I didn't change the amount of whites uh, well just the shadows a bit make them a bit darker and now I'm gonna go straight into the split toning here and for the whites I'm gonna use a yellow tone like this quite saturated uh, and then for the shadows this bluish tone like that and I'm gonna shift this more towards the highlights and now I can further um, add this vignetting effect make it even stronger the smaller well to really low midpoint setting and roundness about there and highlights there and probably on here I'm gonna increase the clarity even more and click OK you'll see the before and after quite a big change before and after so the camera raw it's quite a um, it's quite a a good filter. Um, if you have Lightroom you can also edit in Lightroom this but uh, well if you don't have it as a filter you can still do it so you have to save the image as a JPEG file and then go into the Photoshop's camera on the preferences camera raw and change that setting there that says uh, file handling and change the JPEG to open all supported JPEGs as well with camera raw. But anyways um, this is the effect that I wanted to show you. It's a bit different than the original, but uh, still looking nice because this one I made it quite quickly. But uh, I hope uh, you like this uh, kind of ambient and this kind of colors. And that's uh, that was my objective for this tutorial. So I hope you liked it. I'm Andre from PSD Box, and we'll see you on the next tutorial.